So, painful and poorly drawn, or actually quite viable? Let's find out today. Hello there, and welcome back to the Virtual Fechtula. My name is Oscar, and this is the second video in my ongoing series on footwork in late 15th and early 16th German sources. Now, as I explained last week, um, I, there are a couple of theoretical things to keep in mind. Today, however, I'd really like to go into actual practical footwork. What does it actually look like? And we're going to start with what I call static footwork. Now, you could argue that uh, static footwork is not footwork at all because your legs are not moving, you're not stepping. However, I like to define footwork as pretty much any movement that involves your lower body, um, which allows you to actually count these very interesting balance shifts and these foot turns um, among your footwork, which leads to a couple of really interesting plays. So I definitely think we should not be neglecting the static footwork, hence a full video dedicated to it. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at two specific types of movements. One is changing the balance, and the second is turning your foot. And for each of these things, I'll first explain what it kind of looks like, and then I'll give a couple of examples of what it would look like in practice by interpreting a couple of plays. Now, let's get started with changing the balance. Now, before we do that, um, you will not really see any sort of uh, very exaggerated balance changes or balance shifts in any of the plays in Lekuner. Because remember, these things were made for flat-soled leather shoes. So that means that if you put a lot of weight on any one foot, the chance of that foot slipping out from under you is becoming a lot more significant and you really don't want that to happen. So any of the balance changes that we're going to be talking about are relatively minimal, but still you can do some very interesting plays with these. Let's have a look. In Lekwichner, there these balance changes are most pronounced if you are going to be flowing through the different lagers, or through the different guards. So the high guards, like Stier and Lugensland, tend to have a very equal balance between left and right foot. However, if you go look at the low guards, where you sink your way down a bit, which is the Pastai and Eber, you will definitely find them, that one foot has a little bit more weight on it than the other. Looking at Pastai, for instance, we'll find that we have the most weight on our front foot. So, say about 60 to 40% on front and back. And this allows you, for instance, to, with the majority of the weight on your front foot, to push off quite powerfully backwards, which is where quite a few of the plays from the um, Pastai and Bastion come from. Same goes for Eber, really, where you have the majority of your weight on your rear foot. Especially on the weird one on the left side, they seem to be leaning on the rear foot quite a bit more. So once again, if you want to do this, put about 60% of your weight on the rear foot and then you're quite about where you need to be. Um, pretty much, if you're going to be fencing from Aber, you're likely going to be wanting to explode forward into a thrust and having a bit of more weight on your rear leg will allow you to do that quite effectively. As this really fun flow drill here shows, you can actually uh, use this play between uh, Pastai with the, with the weight more to the front and Abro with the weight more to the back to create quite a bit of reach just from shifting your balance. Now, this is just an example of what you can do by shifting your balance a bit. It's not super significant, but it is there, so let's be aware of that. Okay, so shifting your balance is pretty cool and you can do some really useful stuff with it. But the thing that I find far more interesting personally is turning your foot. Now, before we get into that, uh, a word of warning. Uh, a lot of this is quite speculative. It's mostly based on the images. But if you start experimenting with it, you will likely find that you can do a lot of really interesting things with it. So, here we go. What do I mean with turning the foot? Is that if you balance on the ball of your foot, you can turn your lead foot outward or inward, thereby increasing the range of motion in your hips. And you can use that in all kinds of very useful ways, which I'll be talking about later. But first though, I think I would like to argue that this is quite a common way of moving in German movement culture of around 1500. So it's not particular to fencing. You see this in movement culture in general. And I'd specifically like to point you to, for instance, the work of the sculptor from Munich, Erasmus Grasser. So his sculptures of Morris dancers actually show the same type of foot turns and contortions that you see in Lekuchner and other five books at the time. 
So where it's possible to argue that the images in the fight books might just be distortions by the artist, arguing the same point about 3D sculptures that are quite detailed is going to be a bit more difficult, I'd say. So there might actually be something about the German movement culture that emphasizes these really big hip turns that are facilitated by turning the foot. And so this naturally brings us to the next point, is why is this useful? Why should we be using this? Well, as I said before, uh, turning the foot like this will help you increasing the range of motion in your hips. So you will get more rotation in your hips if you turn the feet. And the advantages of this is, for instance, that you can have more power generation because I think it's pretty common knowledge that if you have a greater range of motion, you can generate power for a longer uh, track of movement, which ultimately uh, leads to greater power output. So it really helps you with power generation, for instance. It increases the reach that you can have by bringing the opposite shoulder to your foot forward. So if you have your left foot in front, you turn it outwards, you can bring the right shoulder forward, which can be very useful in some situations. And finally, in a very similar vein, it will also allow you to maintain structure. So if you have your left foot in front and you need... Oh, hang on. So if you have your left foot in front and you need to bring your right shoulder forward to maintain a proper structure, for instance in a bind, then turning the foot will help you do that. So let's look at a couple of examples. Well, the first and most obvious one is, of course, the first play from Lekutner, which is the Zorn Award and Oben Abnehm. And... In this play, yes, you have a turned left foot to facilitate the right shoulder coming forward to perform the second winding. However, this is probably done with a step, so I'm just going to leave it at that for now. There's a couple of uh, more interesting things where you do these foot turns in a static position. And one of them is this play that I combined from several parts of Talhofer and Lechner, where you are first going to have a loaded up Obenhau with the turned foot outward, then strike the open hand to a Schrankhut with your lead foot turning inward, and then once again doing a Wecker from the Schrankhut that will turn your foot outward again. Now, why do you want to do this? In this case, it has a lot to do with power generation. So in short, we turn the rural lead foot out to generate power for our first open hand. We then turn it in to generate the power to stop that open hand in a guard, and then we once again turn it outward to generate power to perform a Wecker from there. Now, something similar is happening if we, for instance, have the failure from the Andrews tab, like you can see here. It's generally not a good idea to try the failure with two steps, because that will get you a bit too close to your opponent, and you'll generally not have time to do it anyway. So, most people tend to do the failure with the Andrews tab by stepping in on the first Andrews tab and just turning the lead foot, the right one at that point, outwards, so we can generate power for the second Andrews tab that comes in from the left. It becomes more interesting though if you look at a variation of this because this play is quite similar movement wise but this is meant as a dupleton from the left side and this does not only require the power generation that turning the foot gives you but also the increase in reach is very important here. Let's have a look. So first we have an Endrustau coming from the left so we step in with the left here. Then, to be able to perform the dupleton, of course we want to generate power, so turning our left foot outwards will help. But turning the left foot outwards will also bring the right shoulder forward, allowing us to actually get the reach to you know, get to the opponent with the short edge dupleton here. So, we see all kinds of different reasons to be turning the foot um, in one piece at the same time, simultaneously. So that's very interesting. There's, of course, also uh, the turn foot that is very useful if you get into some sort of wrestling play. Especially in any sort of play where you need to control the arm of your opponent, if you perform an action known as uh, Reizen to wrench someone down pretty much, you will need to be able to have good structure. So if you can turn the foot to get that good structure, you, you quite often see that in the wrestling plays. Specifically, for instance, in a Durchlaufen, where if someone runs into you, you don't really have the time or the opportunity to change your footing. So if your right foot in front uh, is in front and someone tries to run into you, you have to run them through, Durchlaufen, and to set that up, it's usually a good idea to just turn that lead foot outwards to allow some form of control over your opponent, and only then put your leg in their way so they will trip and fall over that. 
So anyway, there's a lot of ways you can use that turn foot, and personally, I think it's really one of the charming things about Lekuchner. Um, it really makes it stand out among manuscripts that you see so many examples of it being used, and this allows you to really um, find a lot of different plays where you can practice this type of movement pattern. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you think, so leave a comment and a like in, on, underneath this video, and don't forget to subscribe. And finally, once again, a huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you very much. So, keep fencing, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.